Crown. Former Crown Prince Hamza has said in a newly released voice recording that he would disobey orders by the army to not communicate with the outside world after he was put under house arrest. On Sunday, the Jordanian government said it thwarted what it calls a malicious plot to destabilize the country. The half-brother of King Abdullah says he's being punished for speaking out against corruption. The situation is a little bit difficult. All the guards have left and the chief of staff threatened me on behalf of top agency's officials, where I recorded his words and sent them to my family and those I know outside the country just in case something happened. I'm now waiting for their action. I'm not going to escalate, but I will not abide myself by their orders to stay at home, not to use Twitter, not to be in contact with people and not to see my family. What I've been told by the chief of staff is not acceptable under any circumstances. So I'm still waiting for this matter to be sorted out. Well, we have Natasha name for us standing by in Amman to uh, talk us through the latest developments, Natasha, and tell us what this audio recording suggests. What this audio recording suggests is that what the government on Sunday described as a conflict, a familial conflict, that would be resolved between King Abdullah and his half-brother, Prince Hamza, in a direct phone call, is morphing into uh, two camps and the division between two camps, those who support King Abdullah and the opposition and those who support what Prince Hamza is saying. What you hear in that phone call is defiance a little bit of fear and anger. Bear in mind that Prince Hamza has been echoing the frustrations of the opposition here, talking about alleged widespread corruption within the government, talking about malfeasance and what he called incompetence by the government in terms of implementing what he believes are failed economic policies. What you're hearing from the government is that uh, Prince Hamza and his associates conspired with foreign entities to destabilize Jordan, but we don't know what foreign entities the government is talking about. As far as we know, Prince Hamza has not been charged with anything, and the government, as of Sunday, was maintaining that he has not been placed under house arrest. So, again, this recording, at least on the part of Prince Hamza, is a way to control the narrative, share his side of the story. And if there was any doubt, already Prince Hamza was extremely popular in Jordan, viewed as pious, modest, forging tight relations with the tribes and really echoing the sentiments of the opposition here, these recordings are only serving to make him even more popular among a segment of the population. And Natasha, I wonder if you can just expand a little bit on what you just touched on, and that is uh, some of the anger that some people feel towards the government, which has been simmering in Jordan for a number of years. Why is that? Absolutely. The anger in Jordan has been simmering since at least 2018. Uh, I, to be clear, Jordan has a very difficult economy. It relies on foreign aid. It has a Palestinian and Syrian refugee population. It um, has been dealing with the terms of an international monetary fund, about a $1.3 billion loan that it's taken. And in 2018, the king was forced to implement austerity measures that included raising the sales tax and the income tax. And and people here went crazy. They went to the streets and protests for days. They pushed out the prime minister saying, we are barely scraping by and you're asking us to pay more in taxes. Think of the pandemic. Think of COVID-19 basically as pouring a, uh, or throwing a grenade on the uh, economy, which is already an inferno. The restrictions that have been implemented by the government in an attempt to curb the pandemic have only served to anger the public. So they're very upset about these restrictions, which they believe are wiping out their livelihoods. They're very upset about what they believe is widespread corruption. And so this is the backdrop. So here comes Prince Hamza, who is, this is the first time, at least since King Abdullah has taken the throne, where you're hearing from a member of the royal family expressing a sort of simpatico sentiments to the opposition and critiquing the monarchy. And what the opposition is saying is that this alleged plot that uh, Prince Hamza is being accused 
accused of participating in, what it really is is part of a playbook implemented by the government to crush dissent, even at the highest levels, if it's coming from within the royal family. Analysts say that we do not expect, they do not expect that we will hear uh, further from King Abdullah. But as you're seeing, for a second day in a row, we're hearing plenty from Prince Hamza. Yeah, okay, Natasha, thank you so much for that update from Amman. Well, earlier I spoke to Jawad Anani, who's a former deputy prime minister. He's also the former foreign minister of Jordan. And he explained why the government is not disclosing much information about the situation. Well, I think I'm more inclined to believe that uh, His Majesty probably will look for an amicable solution. And he will try to lay uh, these uh, fears of the Jordanian people and their apprehensions at this particular time uh, to, to rest. Uh, I believe that in the early days of this uh, fury, uh, foray uh, of events, uh, there will be, of course, uh, 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 lots of speculation, lots of guess making, uh, especially that the information which is being supplied uh, when, when the whole case is under investigation is being meager and not sufficient to satisfy the anguish and the uh, eagerness of people to know more. Well, I believe that uh, uh, at this particular time, this is re actually the question which is uh, raising uh, the curiosity of, of everybody. If, if the whole situation has been, been monitored, uh, then the only reason for not revealing the sufficient information at this particular juncture is because they want to investigate more and they don't want to spill more information that may frustrate the investigation. Because that, uh, but but I believe that in uh, that uh, some people probably may have been uh, invoking and trying to destabilize and uh, move people to the streets to to prote protest the current unemployment and uh, you know COVID-19 uh, uh, picking up. Uh, and, and so on. And so, in a way, there is some frustration, and the milieu is encouraging for frustration. So, they don't want 